How to tank the Necrotic Wake dungeon in Shadowlands. In this very casual friendly, very beginner friendly tanking guide, I will tell you everything you need to know about the dungeon, the path through, the skips, how to pull the bosses, what trash to be aware of, and those kind of things. If this is your cup of tea, if you are into casual tanking, and if you're still learning your way through the dungeons, please stick around, I hope you will learn something. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm your host Gyro, as I said pretty extensively, we're going to be tanking uh, Necrotic Wake today. Necrotic Wake, in my humble opinion, is the worst, the most uh, annoying, the least enjoyable dungeon of Shadowlands, that's obviously very very subjective. This recording was made in normal dungeon using my fresh alt, my guardian druid. The tanking tips and tanking advice is applicable to any class, however, and sometimes in many occasions I will be talking to you what a certain class would do in this particular case, but it's not my goal. Ultimately my goal is to just take you through the dungeon, tell you how to handle the bosses, what tips uh, kind of you need to be aware of, and that kind of stuff. Please don't worry by the way about the footage in the background, you don't need to suddenly catch what's going on there, because after this introduction is done, in a minute maybe, um, we will rewind and we will very quickly go point by point, I will disappear from the screen, I'll project the map, I will show you everything you need to know. So that's all cool. As far as the very quick snapshot of the path through the dungeon is concerned, please take a look at the map that I'm projecting on the screen. And yes, if you're trying to properly study your way through the dungeon, you may want to pause here or take a screenshot or something like that. I cannot keep projecting the map, I'm just very very quickly splashing it to you on the screen. Obviously the arrows are showing to you the path and the skips are also marked for you. So talk to people as a tank. First of all, mark yourself. I always mark yourself, myself with something visible that is not in the color scheme of the dungeon. So in Necrotic Wake, I would mark myself with something yellow or with something orange, contrast, con contrast basically, so that people can see you. I also generally always say, hi everyone, please follow closely as we will be skipping stuff or something along those lines. If you are into chain tanking, for example, while leveling through tr Threads of Fate, you may want to macro that as a macro kind of thing. You just press a button and it says that in the chat. So that might be a little bit of a tip for you. More of a, you know, something that is not particularly important, but uh, quality of life. So trash patrols and mini bosses, the named mini bosses, are the worst in Necrotic Wake. It's not the bosses themselves, in my opinion. So you need to particularly pay attention to learn them and to um, to learn how to deal with them. Now, as you saw at the very, very start, we turn hard right and we go along the very, very right edge to skip the most painful trash that stands along those portals in the central area around the first boss. You don't need any of that, believe it or not. You just turn hard right. You make sure that your DPS and your healer is following you closely enough and you pick up the javelin, pick up those javelins and save this first javelin for the first boss. Especially in normal dungeon, but in heroic I would do the same, not assuming that people know this. Before the first boss, tell people to kill worms. That is very, very important. Now onto the boss, Blightbone. Blightbone will be tanked in the corner, in the free corner that you kind of got to by following the path along the right edge. You will dodge his vomit if you can as a tank and DPS should deal with those worms that grow and that apply damage over time effect on the whole group that will kill everyone if you don't kill them quickly enough. I would use the javelin on Blightbone to kind of have a bit of a head start and do a tremendous amount of DPS on him and just basically get rid of him faster. Then I would hop on or kind of skip over the elevated stage or podium right behind at the back, back, back stage of Blightbone area. And I would keep going along that very edge. It massively saves you the time and the pain. You only have one group of trash mobs to pull there, kill them, and then you hop off that edge and you continue towards the, the stairs at the end of the area and you should not have to pull anything else. This saves you, a, once again, a metric, metric ton of time. Once you are up the stairs, there will be a group there with a necromancer in the middle and some smaller mobs around him. You just need to mark necromancer with a skull. You need to pull that smaller group of mobs, 
you need to kill the necromancer and those adds will die as soon as the necromancer is dead. At that point in time there is also a smaller group of mobs after the necromancer, pull them and while the DPS is dealing with them they pose no threat. I would tell the, the pug that you're in, the pickup group, that you will be skipping the big patrol that slowly marches along the area there. Depending on the where patrol is at, if it's towards the right side or the left side of the pathway that you're following, you can skip that patrol on the left or on the right. It's up to you. Narzada mini boss, surrounded by the sorcerers, is the first real challenge here. Now, it is one of the most painful encounters in Necrotic Wake. It is the group wiper, like groups fall apart on this mini boss. It is not uncommon to lose a couple of people on it or to wipe and just lose the whole group, right? It's a huge, huge challenge for heals. DPS needs to interrupt the sorcerers. As a tank, you need to interrupt as well and try to group the group up the sorcerers as much as you can so that we can AoE them and cleave them most efficiently. There is also a javelin on the right hand side from the stairs. You could pick up that javelin again and use it on Nazruda, Narzuda to get rid of him faster. Otherwise, there is just too much ticking, da ticking damage. There is a lot of damage going on. And yeah, the sooner you get rid of that mini boss, the better. Interrupts are the key. Not standing in bed is key, but that's pretty obvious. That should be pro obvious. So you need to pull and kill the two big undead guards on the bridge. Either kill the big skeletal monstrosity that's patrolling slowly behind them or let it pass depending on the timing of how monstrosity is there. If you let it pass and you can somehow time your movement so that you skip the monstrosity, good on you. If not, choose the empty area, probably somewhere around where you killed those two big undead guards on the bridge and kill that skeletal monstrosity as well. It wouldn't be too bad as long as it doesn't just jump you, as, lo as long as you're not just feared into it or as long as it doesn't just join a, your fight with a patrol or something else. So you need to plan. As a tank, a lot of your success, especially in Necrotic Wake, where a lot of annoyances are happening, you need to understand what you're doing. You need to plan your moves. I always mark targets. I would mark both the patrol, the skeletal patrol, and the big patrol similar to the one that we skipped earlier before Narzuda mini boss. And I would tell your friends that you will be skipping the next patrol, that big skeletal undead dude patrol, once again. Now, as it shows on the screen and as I showed you on the map, yeah, with special arrows, you would need to cut across, you would need to time your run particularly well, and it only comes from practice and from looking ahead as I was just telling you, and you need to cut across to the two sorcerers that are carving up some poor dead Kyrian there on the ground. There is another javelin just next to them, pick up the javelin. On the final group before the area that is preceding the next boss, Amath the Harvester, you will have to deal with the necromancer and a trash group in, uh, around him. Once again, that's where you would use the javelin that you picked up next to two sorcerers. You will kill that necromancer very quickly and the other adds will die. And that's how you will enter the next boss area. Amath the Harvester is the next boss. It's very easy in normal and it's quite easy in heroic. I suspect it will be harder probably with some extra um, not skippable mechanics on Mythic, but we are yet to discover that for ourselves. It's not the purpose of this guide. It's a tank and spank from tanking perspective. You would need to watch out for the adds that he summons. The range one is the one that needs to be killed ASAP. I understand that that can pose quite a bit of threat, but your DPS should deal with him. You either can charge at, at, that, at that ranged um, summon, or you just mark it with a skull and your DPS should pay attention to that. Other, other little summons, other little um, skeletons that Am Amath summons, they shouldn't be much of an issue. You should be able to kill this boss very, very easily. Then is the time to fly up to the Necropolis, the Stitchworks as it's called. As I enter the Stitchworks, I typically pull the left group and watch out for the patrolling small spines or whatever they're called. You pull them. I try and deal with them before the bigger corpse collector patrol is pulled, but it shouldn't be ultimately a massive issue for your group if you've been doing okay so far to pull them all if it comes to that. If it comes to that, don't panic. You can just deal, you have enough, you should have enough tools at your disposal as a druid to deal with that. Then just go around the room and pull similar groups in the corners of the room and clear the whole area 
uh, one group at a time, don't pull all of them, don't be a hero, and that's when kind of the boss encounter will begin. Now the next boss encounter is St Surgeon Stitch Flash. It's the only fun boss in here, in my humble opinion. So like I said, when the trash in the room is gone, the encounter starts with him summoning two portals and two of his assistants come out of those portals. I didn't find a way to tank them properly, I don't think they hold aggro on you, but you should still try, I think at first they kind of pay attention to you, but then uh, they will randomly pick a target and start chasing that target and stuff like that. They appear to just run around and randomly choose to throw a cleaver at one or another targets. If you can somehow align the arrow that's pointing where they're about to throw their cleaver, and if you can throw a cleaver from one to another by basically hiding behind another target, you would kind of add to the DPS. Once those two assistants are down, Stitch Flash will summon his first abomination, named abomination, Go Grind. Nothing special there, similar to how you've cleared the trash before, just deal with them. Then it's another named abomination called Rod Spew on the other side of the room. Again, very similar, but a little bit more splash damage to be, to be aware of, but nothing to worry about. When both of these named abominations are out too, the real encounter begins. Stitch Flesh summons an unnamed abomination that you should pick up and tank in the center of the room. Maybe a little bit closer to the stage, but still a little bit, have, leave a little bit of distance, right? That abomination will periodically throw its hook and it will start targeting someone with a red big arrow on the floor, you cannot miss it. That someone, it could be you, could be anyone else, needs to understand at that point in time that they need to run very quickly, or preferably already be, between the abomination and the, the stage that the boss Stitch Flash is on, so that the hook flies past them, they need to get out of the way, obviously, um, before the hook is released. Uh, and the abomination needs to pull Stitch Flesh onto the area, onto the area where you can reach them, off their little elevated protected area. You fly up to the final boss and engage the boss, and the only real threat there is that you could be caught in his freezing AoE, which is telegraphed very visibly and very much well ahead, so there's plenty of time for you to get out of that thing, not to get caught in one place. And also the biggest killing ability is Comet Storm. You kind of need to pay attention to when, when the boss starts casting Comet Storm. If you have a Deadly Boss Mods add-on installed, which, like, as I say, in every tanking video, in every LFR review, there is no reason for you not to have that add-on. Do yourself a favor, go to curseforge.com and download DBM, Deadly Boss Mods. So Deadly Boss Mods should tell you when he's about to cast Comet Storm, and that's when you start running. Just pick a direction and run, not towards your friends, but towards an empty area so that Comet Storm doesn't hit them. But also, just don't stop, just run, and you will be okay. In Heroics, the extra thing that happens, the extra ability that happens, is that periodically the boss will banish one of the players to a lower ledge of the Necropolis that we are floating on, and then that person alone needs to run quickly past some fairly trivial obstacles, as far as I can remember. And then there is, I think, a very easy mob to kill in the end, after which you speak to a Kyrian Ascendant and they bring you back up to the roof where everybody else is fighting the boss. So that's the only extra kind of mechanic to deal with. Other than that, you don't have to worry about anything. Once again, this is not a mythic dungeon review which is why there is not much to worry about here, and that's how you will finish the Necrotic Wake dungeon, which is the worst dungeon of Shadowlands. And that's it, my friends. Hopefully you've learned something from this little video. As a new beginner to tanking, as someone who is trying tanking, as someone who is simply maybe an old tank but returning to Shadowlands and you just have never dealt with Necrotic Wake. Because of the trash, and because of people not knowing how to skip, not knowing what path to follow, there is just so much time wasted, so much energy wasted, and just people just run out of patience, wiping over and, and over again on those portal mini bosses and all that kind of stuff in the middle of the area before Blightbone. Which is why I'm saying to you, I hope that it was helpful, because once I've learned these tricks, my own efforts have become a lot, a lot easier. So I can only imagine that some people will also experience some sense of relief. At least I sincerely, sincerely hope so. If it did help you, and if you'd like to tune in for more videos where I'll be reviewing other dungeons, talking to you about how to tank other dungeons, 
in due course and talk about mythic affixes when I come to that myself, then please subscribe and please like the video, tell YouTube that you like my content so that it can show it to more people. Videos are being released twice a week. Please stay tuned. Talk to you very soon. See you later. Bye.